What's up team? This is Coach Abraham with Armor Strength and Conditioning checking in with another video. Today's topic is going to be all about end season, how you should be training, my top tips so you can maximize your potential and your performance on the pitch. So let's get it. Yeah, top of the morning. I know that you thought I was dormant. Woke up early from shots that was swarming a black. First thing I want to talk about and clear the room and say that you should be strength training in season and let's look at some of the research on what some professional footballers are doing a 12-week in-season program with weekly strength training their goal was for maintenance and because they are professionals their team training is very high the volume and the amount of work they're doing is very high sometimes with double sessions they don't necessarily prioritize development from strength training like they need to get stronger they need to get faster but they take a maintenance approach if if they can maintain what they gain in the off season that's a win because what happens is during season their strength speed and power does start to go down but with even just one strength training session this research shows us they were able to maintain their strength their speed and their power during those first 12 weeks this was just a 12 week study and i know especially for my professional players they sometimes feel iffy about strength training during season and let me give you a quick example so i am working with one pro player in europe i'm not going to say his name but we are lifting one or two times in the week and the reason i'm saying one or two times is because sometimes his workload sometimes he has double days his workload is very high and we can only get in one strength training session because again the goal is for him to maintain what he gained in the off season but what i do notice with these players is that most of the time these players are still improving their strength and speed as long as they are doing everything accordingly and because he is doing one-on-one -on -one with me everything is specific to him if you're interested i got my custom and online coaching and we need to remember that max strength influences power an increase in maximal strength does improve your power abilities as there are significant correlations between maximum strength, lower body, and sprint and jump performance. And last thing before we go into my top tips, what happens if you train too much? Well, let's just say that if you are doing way too many gym sessions, way too many sprint sessions, way too much fitness, your performance is going to suffer. And remember, in season, you want to be performing at a very high level. First thing I want to go over is the schedule and like you are seeing right here on the screen This is a schedule I created to kind of help you and guide you on What to do during whether you have one game whether you have two games and as you can see So this is actually straight from my new in season three month program, which includes a gym session uh, feet and ankle strengthening a speed session and just look at it for yourself again this is just an example and this is i i always recommend any of these like schedules use it as a guide never read it verbatim because remember everybody's a little bit different maybe you had a team training session where you are just completely gassed out and and that morning you had a heavy lifting session but for whatever reason you just felt like crap and this is why i'm saying use this as a guide so you can schedule your team trainings your strength trainings um accordingly and as you can see we have a max of two strength sessions okay and that doesn't mean that you can't do three strength sessions but my goal is usually if i can at least get one to two in season i am all set for my younger players especially if you're if your training volume isn't as high you can definitely get away with three sessions but again just make sure that you are recovering and you are for sure sleeping about eight to ten hours uh, a day Real quick i just want to say thank you so much for your continued support um, i love getting your messages on how much i have helped you i have a lot of free information and you know i'm putting things out that i wish i had back when i was a player but my in-season program just came out if you're interested in that watch this video and see if this program suits you it's going to be the first link in the description box below so make sure you check it out back to the video so as far as fitness one time for the most part will be enough because you're already doing so much running and team training now the type of fitness you want to find something that's where you're not going to be cutting as much maybe maybe it's just going to be what i call half gasters where you sprint 50 yards and back or maybe it's just you are just sprinting 100 yards and then you rest like that i'm going to provide examples watch 
these two videos that you see right here on the screen. Those are some of my best videos for, for the type of fitness that you should be looking for, which is the anaerobic fitness. Now, of course, because this is in season, you should already be in shape. And if you're not in shape, meaning your aerobic base is not already built, then you need to be thinking about why aren't you in shape? Because coming into season, guys, unless you got injured, you should already be in shape. And that's what I'm emphasizing. So again, watch these two videos right here if you want a little bit more in depth on the type of fitness that you should be doing in season. Speed training, maybe we don't want to do as much change of direction or reactive things. You are already doing so much cutting in practice. Maybe you're doing individual ball work, skills work that requires a lot of cutting between cones. And you gotta ask yourself, is that, like if you were to do more on speed and agility, is that really the smartest approach? So what I do with most of my players, um, especially in a team setting, we usually just focus on linear sprinting. If we are sprinting just in a linear fashion between 10 to, to 40 meters, well, our acceleration is gonna go up, our, our top speed is gonna go up, and we are exposing the body to the demands of the game and something they may not be getting in practice. Again, you are doing all these cuts and small change of directional things in, in team training, and you're not getting enough of the longer distance sprinting. And by doing that on your own, um, during an individual session, you are exposing your posterior chain, your hamstrings, your glutes to those high speed movements, meaning you are resilient. So whenever a counter attack happens in the game, not only will you be faster, but your body will be used to it, meaning less injuries and higher performance and higher speeds. A quick little guide on how I train for top speed, always begin with lower distances. Like the first week, maybe you have 10 yards. The second week, maybe you got 15 yards, 20, 30, 35, 40, et cetera. And the reason why I highly recommend that is because especially if you're not used to sprinting 40 meters continuously, your body may break down, you may pull a hamstring, and that's the last thing that you wanna do during season or any time for that matter. Another way that you can progress into it if you already wanna do your longer distances is maybe doing some tempo runs where you're not running at max velocity. So maybe you sprint at 80%, 85%, 90%, and you keep increasing each week like that. Again, the purpose is not to do everything at once, but to train smart. And this is what training smart means. If you are training smart, you're gonna be a healthy athlete. Now, gym and weight training and what should you be doing? You need to include an explosive movement like plyometrics, uh, weighted explosive movements like your Olympic lifts, compound lifts, single leg, core, ankle, groin. And those are the main things I like to emphasize with my players. Obviously, mobility is very good too, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm talking about what most players really aren't getting. And let's go over this, this study I saw from the NCAA, a division one school, where they did performance strength and plyometric sessions approximately once a week during a 16 week competitive season. And they were able to maintain their maximal strength, sprint performance, and vertical jump ability with just including these types of exercises. So again, plyometrics, maybe you're doing box jumps, hurdle jumps, continuous hurdle jumps. Those are some of my favorite ones during season. Single leg plyometrics as well, like lateral bounds, rotational bounds, being quick, being explosive, things that are gonna expose the body to different body positions and weird angles. As far as your explosive movements, again, maybe it's a dumbbell jump, maybe it's a trap bar jump, maybe it's a, a hang high pull, something like that, where you are still reminding your body, hey, we need to be still moving explosively and compound, compound lifts, your traditional bench press, pull-ups, squats, deadlifts, single leg movements, which this is gonna be more specific to actual movements you see on the pitch, any sort of single leg push, any sort of single leg pull for the hamstrings or for the quads, things like that, but don't focus on, on the muscle, focus on the movement, focus on the action. Anything core, anti-extension, anti-flexion, anti-rotation, like dead bugs, pull-up presses, Something of the ankle, I like to do spring ankle rockers. Guys, I'm giving you everything I, I do with all my players. Like, like you're not gonna find this type of gold anywhere. So definitely take notes, watch this video a couple of times. As far as the groin, Copenhagen's, progress into Copenhagen's, get a ball, squeeze it in between the legs. Again, you need to be progressing, be smart with your training. Up next, what is the best recovery method? Is it foam rollers? Is it ice baths? Well, the number one form of recovery is gonna be sleep. If you are sleeping at least eight to 10 hours a day, you are already on the right track to recovering well. 
after you have that down, then you can add your extra mobility, your foam rolling sessions and things like that. And the research shows us that if you are not getting enough sleep, your sprint performance suffers, your, uh, especially for team sports, which for footballers, we have noticed that repeated bouts of exercise are affected pretty fast. That is why we need to be sleeping well and not even that, but our cognitive function, right? If we can't think well, we can't react well and we can't make good decisions on the pitch. And if you're somebody who just can't get good sleep, maybe for my busier, older players, take naps. I think Ronaldo takes, what, two to five naps, don't quote me on that, a day. And naps have shown to be, to actually improve your performance your, and your cognitive ability. So if you can't get your full eight hours of sleep, definitely take a 20 minute nap. You probably don't want anything over 30 minutes because that just turns into sleep. So as far as how, how many hours, what the research does tell us is that if you are getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep per day, well, that's gonna help promote recovery. We need to remember that as athletes, you require more sleep for recovery. When you train, you break down your muscle and you're, and you're beating up your body. Those are high stressing things. So to recover, we need to sleep to promote recovery from all those high training loads and team sessions. And even for, for some teenagers, it is recommended that you sleep up to 10 hours. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment if you have any questions, follow me on my Instagram, check out all my training programs. Remember my end season program just came out. If you have more questions over that, you make sure you watch this video right here, which explains a little bit more on which program suits you better. Also hit that subscribe button for more high quality content and I'll see you on the next one.